My movie I did was called This Is Meg. It's a little film that we shot in eight days, shot it on the Blackmagic uh, 2.5K. I was a Final Cut 7 holdout uh, for a long time, uh, longer than I should have been. Um, the rendering took a little too long, um, but I just didn't want to jump into Final Cut X or uh, Premiere uh, at the time. So uh, I've been a colorist for 10 years, and I've been using DaVinci, uh, first on color and then DaVinci. Uh, and I always used to skip this little tab called edit uh, between the media log and the color, the color tab. And when I was going to shoot Black Magic, uh, I was like, well, you know, I would, let me try this editing tab and see what happens because it can edit raw. So no transcoding, no round tripping, no workflow issues. And uh, I decided to, uh, to give it a shot. I got tired of waiting around um, for someone to give me permission to make a movie. So I decided to grab a camera, a uh, three-man crew, uh, and uh, go shoot a movie. And got a bunch of my friends together and we shot. Uh, this in eight days. So, end of the day is you got to just kind of get up and go do it and stop waiting around. That's the one bit of advice I can give you. And it's uh, a lot of things have happened to me uh, as a filmmaker. Uh, opportunities have opened up purely from doing a silly little uh, feature film that I did last summer. How many Final Cut 7 users are in the crowd? So, when Final Cut 10 came out, what did you all do? Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, boycotted, went crazy, it was, uh, it was a mutiny. Um, and I think Apple kind of dropped the ball, um, where, which with such a wonderful piece of software like Final Cut 7, um, they kind of dropped the ball and uh, Premiere picked up that ball and they've ran with it. Um, I personally have, I, I know Premiere is a good so editing system now, I mean they did, I mean David Fincher edits with it and everything, but I'm old enough to remember when Premiere wasn't, so I still have that stigma in my head of Premiere, so that's why I just didn't want to jump into it. Um, but this, this uh, but DaVinci Resolve actually does a lot of things that, that Premiere doesn't do, in my opinion. Um, and it's a very easy software to transition to. If you were a Final Cut 7 guy or girl, uh, the software, actually the hotkeys and everything, I think 99% of them are Final Cut hotkeys. So they were smart and, and you can map them however you want, but like out the box, they're Final Cut 7. If you are an editor and been editing for a handful of years, you'll be able to pick up DaVinci probably within a day or two um, and get you know, editing very quickly. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, when I jumped in to edit my feature with it, I had never edited with it before. I mean, very basic, very basic stuff, but I was like, well, let me just give it a shot. I learned how to edit on DaVinci while I was editing my feature film, which I cut in three weeks. While I was editing, Meg, I would, I, if I had a question about something that looked a little fishy, I'd jump right into color, do a quick color grade. I'm like, nope, that works. Or, or if I want, like, let me, I want to zoom in on that and see how the resolution holds up because of the way the lighting was that day. And it worked. And sometimes it didn't work, sometimes it did, but I had that information with me right then and there and it was all in one system. Whether if you're editing on Premiere, let's say, and then you've, you've now exported everything, got everything into DaVinci as a color system and an online system, and it's working, for you to go back and do edit is just a pain in the, uh, pain in the butt. <laughs> DaVinci, if you have an entire network or entire edits, you know, suite of a bunch of uh, machines, you could be setting them up everywhere. I have my VFX teams that I work with install DaVinci on their end just so they see what I see. So if there's, a color, if there's a color issue or if there's a plate issue, they can simply just put it in and say, oh, okay, this is what we're getting, or I'll send them a LUT. Is it what you're looking like, and blah, blah, blah. So, and it's free, so they can do that for you. You can't do that with Adobe. You can't do that with other uh, uh, nonlinear editing systems, so that's a really nice big plus. One trick, by the way, for all editors in the room, if you want to make your actress happy, all you got to do is take the, f the shot and just squeeze it by 1%. 1% squeeze, she just lost 10 pounds. I'm not kidding you, I did it for my lead actress. I showed her, she's like, oh, and she was just amazed. And I do it, so every shot in the movie with her in it, it squeezed 1%. And, it, and you'll never notice it, and it never hurts any other the aspect ratio of anything else, but it just, just tightens things up a little bit. I was attached to another project. It was a million dollar project. Fell through again as a director. I was like, God damn it. I'm not 20 anymore. I can't keep playing this Hollywood game. So I said, screw it. I'm just going to pick up a camera and go shoot a movie. And 
what gave me the courage was my audience, my, my followers on Indie Film Hustle, uh, talking to them all the time and, and, and kind of giving them all that knowledge and, and experience that I have, finally gave me the, the um, courage to finally just say, screw it. I'm just going to go make something. If it comes out, great, great. If it doesn't, no big deal. It's not a big deal. I'm just going to go out and do it. I called up a friend, she, uh, I, you know, Jill, who's the lead of this, and she, uh, I go, hey, I want to make a movie. Call your friends, and she knows people from Reno 911 and Mad TV, and you probably recognize some of the faces in the movie. And I'm like, let's go make a movie. She's like, all right, let's make it about your life. I'm like, all right. And three weeks later, we had a, a scriptment, which was a very loose 18-page uh, uh, idea of what the movie was going to be about. Uh, very structured, but we had a lot of improv beats. So we hired great improv actors, and they, um, they came in, they did their job, and my job was basically to capture the lightning. And editing improv is not easy, especially when you edit it as a normal narrative and not like a Reno 911 edit where you just jump cut a lot. I actually edited the feature as a feature, which, you know, not easy to do when everything changes on every other take. We shot it over a course of, I think, six weeks, but eight days within those six weeks, um, and just, just showed up. I never went past 10 hours. I think our average day was six. Um, but I was also working with really high-end actors. These guys are, you know, veterans. So I didn't have to deal with drama. It was me, my DP, my, um, my gaffer, and my, my sound person, and grip. And that was it. So keeping it lean and small. Um, I found out that I was using basically the Ed Burns uh, way of making movies. Uh, he does the same thing, three-man crew. He's actually leaner than I was, generally speaking. Uh, I had one person doing behind the scenes sometimes, um, but that was basically the way I did it. And the only way something like that happens is you have to have a tool set that you can do a lot of that jo of th those jobs. So I was the editor, I was the cameraman, I was, I, 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 you know, I've built up these tools over the course of my career, and I was able to use them on this. Hiring a, a DP, hiring a DIT, hiring a post supervisor, hiring an editor, hiring a color, wouldn't have been able to make it happen. So you have to have someone or access to someone who has those kind of skill sets to be able to do a movie. I'm doing another, hopefully two features this year. Um, uh, by the end of the year, I'm hoping to get at least two in the can um, using the same method. Um, small little movies that I want to do for low budgets and, uh, and I'll sell them myself to to my audience and uh, to anybody who wants to watch them. But it's the new model, I think, uh, keeping the budgets low, telling the stories you want to tell, um, and slowly but surely build off that, like the Duplass brothers did, like Joe Swanberg did, like Lud Shelton did, um, like Ed Burns did, all those kind of guys. So it is, it is a feasible possibility now to do that, where it wasn't, um, it wasn't years ago, but now it is. That's it? That's it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs>